Isn't he great? He lights up my face, causing worlds to shake. At the sound of his name, I stood in awe. When I heard him call out my name, and I'll never be the same. Isn't he great? He lights up my face, causing my Good evening, and welcome to the Realms of Glory Conference. Woo. Let's stand together. Now just find a victim, stretch your hand toward them. And Father, we together just pray more of your presence right into this one. Pour it in right now, Lord. We just love your presence. We love your Holy Spirit. And we ask you for more tonight. We ask you for the more that you desire to flow in tonight. We want to choose to be children before you, to play before you, and enjoy you as our Heavenly Father in new and fresh ways. We want to see angels. We want to hear the angels over the course of this week, Father. We want to step into places we've never stepped before. We want our hearts to be absolutely soft and open. We want willing hearts. We choose that, Lord. Would you cause our hearts to be in that very place? Would you cause the heart of the one that we stretch our hands to, to be in that very place? Open their eyes. Open our eyes, Lord, that we might, might just absolutely rejoice in the one who loves us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Very good. Well, I'm going to ask you to do something. As we begin this conference, it's always better to start in that place of being a family. And one of the best places to be in a family is to actually know the name of the person who's standing beside you or behind you. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds just to find out the name. Say hello to the person beside you and behind you. Go! <laughs> Yes. 
again. Whoever beside you, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, for them, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Okay, hands on the top of your heads. More, Lord. More, Lord, more, Lord, more, more, Lord.
fix our eyes on you, O oh Lord. On the one who loves us, who has loved us from forever unto forever. You're our goal, our desire. as we draw near to you.
desire you O oh Lord you are all that we want all that we need in you our dreams are fulfilled in every way and tonight we turn afresh to you and we make our declarations things that we know to be true
fix our eyes then on you, O oh Lord. Would you come and fill this place afresh? Now just turn your hearts to him. Don't look around. Just turn your hearts to him. Yes, Lord. Keep coming, Holy Spirit. Yeah. 
lift your hearts to him. Let your glory rain down, oh Lord. More, Lord. Let your glory rain down. Let your glory rain down. Let your glory rain down. Yes, Jesus. I think you can do better than that. Give the Lord a big shout of praise. Oh, Jesus. Mm. We love to be in your presence. Ah, and there is so much more. There really is so much more. Tell your friend next to you, hey, there's more for you here. Tonight is your night. This week is your week you are going to get more of the love and the power and the fire of the Holy Spirit. <sighs> Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Holy Spirit, oh. give them more. Whoa, just keep coming. Mm. Wow. Whoa. Well, Lord. welcome to the Realms of Glory Conference. Special welcome to everybody watching at home on the, over the internet, live TV, Revive TV. Yeah. It is just awesome, an awesome, no. wonderful presence in here tonight. We're going to have an amazing night. It's Ooh, already it's good thick here. in here. Oh, uh, it's really thick. Oh. Give them more, Lord. Lord, we thank a, you for your presence. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, we are Why don't welcome. you pray for your friend right next to you and say, You're go welcome. on, You're have welcome. a good big drink of the Holy Ooh. Spirit's presence right here. Wow. Mm. Have a big drink, honey. Whoa. Yeah. 
Step up. Again. Uh. <laughs> Again. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Lord, let another wave of heaven go through this room right now. An awesome wave of your glory and your presence, Jesus. Frank, maybe can you help bring uh, Heidi on Ponson here? Hi no, the other one back there. Heidi, come on up, and, and I want you to share what happened to you last week in Africa. <laughs> but you can go ahead and take your seats right now. That's, uh, that's amazing. How many people have never been here before? This is your first time with us. Oh, Give me a massive welcome. big wave. Will welcome, you do that? Welcome, welcome. Look at them all. Yeah, I know. It looks like a third of them or more. I know. So welcome, you guys. We're just, yeah. um, you need to know that we've been having an amazing time with the Holy Spirit yeah. here for 15 <laughs> years. <laughs> Carol, you say 15 years, you can't hardly believe it. You're I like, know. what? Are you sure? 15 sure it's not years. One honey. or two? No. I know, but we've been having so much fun. Ah, it 15 seems like... years, everybody. The wow. faithfulness of God has come and changed hundreds of thousands of lives. Mm. And it is amazing just to get your head around that. Well, I want you to meet a really nice lady here. Do we have anyone here from Germany? Give me a wave if you're from Germany. Okay, we have some friends from Germany. Good, welcome. Well, Heidi here is from Germany originally. She is a member of our church and a wonderful faithful cell leader here, I might say, with, uh, with her husband George. But Heidi was always, I'm trying to find the right word, very well behaved. <laughs> very <laughs> A little proper. bit on the serious <laughs> side. And, um, and so that, that was fine, you know. We need some designated drivers around here, but Anyway, she came on an outreach that Steve led, and I was on it. We went to Ghana, Africa last week. And here's what happened. We, we had a wonderful school of revival for a number of leaders. We had about 400 pastors and leaders in that school, and then it swelled to about 1,000 at night. But on the last night, we had, we, we talking about the Holy Spirit. I had everybody do what I'm going to get you to do right now. And then Heidi's going to tell us what happened when she did this. But I was telling them, the kingdom of heaven is within reach. Did you know that? That was the message of John the Baptist. That was the message of Jesus. Heaven's within reach. The kingdom of heaven is within reach. I said, well, just stretch up your hands up, up, over your head right now. But not to putting your hands in the air, but by faith, putting them into that realm of the kingdom of heaven. Put your hands into realms of glory here tonight by faith and get that thick, oily presence of the Holy Spirit all over you. And we did that, you know, for a while. And, and I asked the worship team, the amazing worship team in Ghana there to, to sing, Welcome Holy Spirit. And oh, we began to sing it over and over and over and over again. Welcome, Holy Spirit. I am in your presence. Fill me with your power. Oh, live inside of me. And we sang it over and over. And I tell you what, it got thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker and heavier. <laughs> and then I said, okay, now take your own hand and place it on your head like that. Well, I watched this happen. With Heidi here, the minute she put her own hand on her head, it was as though she was struck by lightning, and she's never been the same <laughs> since. Heidi, tell us what's going on. Oh, hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, well, like as, as, ooh. <sighs> as John says, this is not, not normally how I am. I'm normally very, I think, managed together. and together and... <laughs> And I don't know what happened in Ghana. I, I think I just felt I needed to be there. My husband and I, we're actually building a, a business there. And the main purpose, ooh, <coughs> the, 
the main purpose of the business really is to to set that country free, really free from all demonic spirits, free from the spirit of poverty, to just bring the Holy Spirit over this entire ooh, country. And so primarily we are business people and we, we thought, look, we need to bring the money back to the kingdom and then really do a lot of good things. And so I felt when I heard they're doing an Elsa in Ghana, this is the main purpose, why are we even there? So I said, look, I need, I need to go. We have three kids and one is still pretty small. So I said, God, look, if I need to go, I'm not quite sure how, <laughs> but ooh, he just worked it out and said, okay, I'll go, I'll go, whatever needs to happen there. And, and how many are catching this? Can is she make a sense to you? Are you catching it? Okay. All right, go on. We're in Ghana, right? We're in Ghana now. And it started the first day and, and, and you can't believe it. There are 15 people and maybe two or three knew each other. The rest were coming from England, a couple of them from Vancouver, and I don't know what happened already the first day. There was such a bond. And I know I met Donna. Donna, where are you? I saw Priscilla and Otang. Just, just wave if you're here somewhere. There's a couple of the Ghana team here. Yes, over there. And so whatever happened within the first day, I think there was such a bonding of love. Like we, we didn't know each other, but I think God just prepared us for that whole week. And so we just had a day to get to know each other, and the next day it started. And I think the more, ooh, the more we were obedient to just do what God wanted us to do and give and give, the more he blasted the team back, and it was just going back and forth and back and forth. And I think the climax really was Friday night, where we all thought, look, ooh, we are the ministry team. We are supposed to be on our feet. <laughs> We're supposed to pray for others. We can't be on the floor, and we were trying to get up the floor, and we just couldn't. <laughs> and I think it was just such a presence I've never experienced. I'm in this church now for the last 10 years, and yes, as John says, involved in many things. We had a cell from the beginning. I'm up in kids' ministry already for a long time. And I think on that Friday night when John prayed and, and really honoring the anointing, it just hit me. I had, I had no space. I only saw chairs and I thought, God, don't break my neck, please. <laughs> and I fell on the floor and it just hit me that whatever we did there for the entire week for the Ghanaian people and setting them free, I just saw also Canada and the Canadian children. And I said, look, we need to bring this back Ooh, to our kids just exactly the same way. So they don't have to wait for years and years to be set free right. and go to the deliverance, but we equip them right from the beginning with all the tools we have, and yes, they walk in victory! Amen! Wow. Oh, wow, wow, wow. And, and right the next wave was really the wave for Germany, and I am German, and my heart is still partly there, at least. <laughs> And he just, yeah, hit me again and said, look, you need to bring this to Germany in the German language. We need a wave going to that whole country as well. So, yes, it was just wow, an incredible week. And just to see all the Ghanians receiving and receiving and be set free and, and get fuller and fuller. And as we gave God setting us more and more free and filling us up more and more, it was, oh, what a week. <laughs> and I tried all last week to get back in the office and do something meaningful, and I couldn't. <laughs> So God is showing me right now, at least step by step again, how to get back to normal and bring the business part and his part back together and make this all work. So Sometimes it, it, he makes it all work somehow, yes. doesn't he, Heidi? Well, I think you should get one more for Germany. Just let's all do it again. Hold our hands up in the air. Say, oh, kingdom of God, I put my hands by faith up yes. into your realms of glory right here. Let your oily, thick presence come all over my hands with that rich anointing of the Spirit. In Jesus' name. Now just lay your hand on your own head there, Heidi. <laughs> go on, go on, go on. Take a double portion for Germany. <laughs> oh, Lord. Where are the Germans again? Just stand up where you are. Run over and just bless them wherever you see them and say, we want revival in Germany in Jesus' name. Oh, my goodness, my goodness, we do. Let the river flow. Let the fire fall. Let the kingdom come. God, let your will be done. 
I tell you, the Lord is moving all over the earth. There is a fire that has been released on the earth, the fire of the Holy Spirit, and there is no stopping it. Nothing stops the Holy Spirit. Nothing. Nothing stops the Holy Spirit. He is releasing his fire and his power and his presence all over the earth, and it's just a marvel in our eyes. And Lord, we believe for the nations of this world. We believe for North America to be set on fire once again, and we believe for Europe to be set on fire once again in Jesus' name. If you're from Europe somewhere, stand to your feet right now from, from Europe. England, Germany, France, Spain, uh, Scotland, Ireland, wherever you're from, just stand to your, to your feet right now. And let's believe for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Carol and I will be in Europe all next month. We will be in, uh, in England and Scotland and back to London, England, and then to Norway and then up to Levanger, Norway, and we're just believing for the fire of God to be released. Grab hands with somebody and let's believe God. Come on. Europe is not post-Christian, Father. Europe is not secular, Father. We call Europe into the fire of the Holy Spirit right now. And we say, come on, Germany. Come on, England. Come on, France. Come on, Spain. Come on, Norway and Sweden. Come on, all of you European nation, come into the fire of God and let the fire of God be released upon you. And let the glory of his presence be your portion tonight. I thank you, Lord God, for all that you're doing in Africa and in Latin America and in China in all the nations of the world, it is a wonder and it's marvelous in our eyes. But oh God, let your fire burn once again. All across North America and all across Europe, we pray. Don't, do not pass us by, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, we believe God for revival for your nation. Amen. Amen, amen. Give the Lord a big shout again. We're going to have it, everybody. It's happening. It's happening. Oh, man. When I witnessed what happened with Heidi, I realized how suddenly God can come and do it. It's just in a moment of time. Listen, she's been in this church for 10 years and enjoyed it and a part of it and you know touched a little bit you know what I'm saying how many know what I mean when I say touched a little bit there's a difference between being touched a little bit and being blasted by the Holy Spirit to where you're you're trying to get it together and trying to get up on your feet and you cannot stand up on your feet to save your life that's what I mean getting blasted by the Holy Spirit Whew. Kingdom of God come. Wow. Who else got a testimony of something God's done in your life? Wave at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, two, three. There's a few hands. Sue, you're sitting here. Why don't you come on up for a minute? I want, I want you all to meet our PA. Carol's on my PA. Sue Carey's right here. Come on. We're taking her to Europe as well. But she's another one that just gets blasted in the anointing, Carol. I know she does. And um, it's amazing how, you know, Sue, you've worked it out, how to get things done and how to, how to stay full of she, the Holy Spirit. Because she really can get things done, this girl. What do you want to say to all these people in the world here? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like working for John and Carol? Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what I told you to say. <laughs> You know, the secret to getting things done is stay like a good distance from John and Carol. So you can stay standing. <laughs> Let's stretch our hands toward her and say, more, Lord, let fire come on her. <laughs> Fill her up, Holy Spirit. Let glory come on her. Yeah, in Jesus' wonderful name, let the glory come. Let it come. Fire of God, let it come. 
Well, I just think there's just such faith in here tonight. I think the Lord wants to heal some people. <clears throat> How many have got a physical need in your body? You got pain or something? Why don't you stand to your feet? We can all do this, of course. There's hardly any perfect people. Most people have something wrong. You know, too many moles or not enough hair or something. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to believe God. Listen to me. It is your Father's will to heal you. And His time is now. How do I know that? Because Jesus healed everybody. And He did not do one thing that was out of the Father's will. Not one. It is your Father's will to heal you. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And his kingdom is a, healing of, a kingdom of healing and life and peace and blessing. So I want you to just put all of the reasons to one side. All of the ungodly beliefs. Well, nothing like that really happens to me and others get healed, but never me. All that kind of stuff. Listen, that is a lie from the enemy. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I want you to lift your hands into his presence once more. By faith, like a little child would do. Intentionally put your hands into realms of glory and touch that kingdom, the eternal presence of God. And ask him and say, oh, Holy Spirit, will you come upon me now? I give my hands to you. Let them be anointed with your presence. Let them be filled with the fullness of God. Let my hands be an extension of the hands of Jesus. I receive that anointing now by faith. That anointing that heals in his glorious name. Now bring those anointed hands back down and lay them on your body wherever the pain is that headache that shoulder that heart condition that stomach condition those knees those ankles those hips whatever it is those lungs that blood condition and just agree with me say this with me this healing belongs to me tonight because of what jesus has done I receive my healing right now in the name of Jesus. Now just breathe in his presence. Let that presence, that awesome presence of God come and heal you now. Take a deep breath and just breathe all that problem out. The Lord's touching someone's eyesight right now. I thank you, Father, for that. Open those eyes. Let them see clearly. That breathing problem in the name of Jesus, as the fire of God comes upon those lungs, I rebuke that emphysema in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, that blood condition. Come out of that person now in the name of Jesus Christ. I tell headaches to go, migraines to go. Lord, just realign that person's spine. I break shock and trauma off of you from from injuries and from accidents and from negative life experiences. I break that trauma off of you and I release you. And Lord, we also choose to forgive everyone who has hurt us and sinned against us. We let it go in this place because we want to be free. In Jesus' wonderful name. There's another heart condition healed. Something wrong with the valve in your heart. God is healing that heart valve now i give you praise father i thank you for it in the name of the lord Whoa. another eye condition being healed <clears throat> and another eye condition someone getting all these floaters all the time father we erase those floaters from before their eyes right now in the name of jesus kingdom of god keep coming oh what a mighty savior I tell pain to come out of your body 
in Jesus' name, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Father, there's someone here that, wow, has a blood condition. And it just, um, I don't know, it's really either thick blood, it, it's just, um, you can almost feel it going through your veins. It feels really funny. And God is healing that right now. Just put your hand on your heart. Wow. And it goes right now in Jesus' name. Wow. And someone who's in a car accident and they had an injury on their neck. And you just are in such pain with that right now. God is healing that right now in Jesus' mighty name, honey. Oh, Lord, we forgive that person. Wow, that caused that accident. Wow. Honey, pray that with me. Jesus, I forgive whoever caused the accident. And yeah. I ask you yeah. for your mercy right now. Come and heal me now in Jesus' name. Lord, I break the shock off of that neck right now in Jesus' name. And the pain goes right now as your healing fire touches her. Whoa, how's your neck, ma'am? It's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you, Lord. Okay, Thank what I Lord. want you to do, everybody, is wow. just right now begin to do what you could not do a moment ago wow. without pain or problems or whatever. Thank just you, quickly check yourself, swing that shoulder, move those knees, check those hips. Come on, move it. And sometimes you're healed of things you cannot tell, the blood condition or heart and lungs and all that kind of stuff. But... The, the one I called out, that lung condition, take a deep breath and you'll find that, wow, I can breathe easier. I have mobility that I didn't have. I'm, God is moving right from the very beginning in this place. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now then, check yourself for me. And if you feel like something has really happened already, I want you to wave your hand at me like you're excited. Come on, you're excited about it. Will you do that? Look at all these hands waving. Oh, my goodness, the, the kingdom of God is among us here. Well, listen, if you're excited about it, jump up out of your seat, run down to the front quickly, and we'll take, you know, half a dozen testimonies or so. So come on, run, 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 quick, quick, quick. I want to hear what's happened to you. Oh, look at this lady run here, yeah. Just come on up on the side. I'll make it easier for you. Oh, my goodness. Father, I ask that another wave of glory would go through the room, right? Beginning at the front, all the way to the back. All you people under the mezzanine. Lord, let the cloud of heaven just come under that place and heal the people back there in Jesus' name. Hi, what's your name? Hi, my name's Denise. And what's happened? Well, what's happened, when I was younger, I had pneumonia. And ever since then, whenever I get a cold, it affects my lungs. And I had a cold recently. Am I breathing great? And I wasn't before. You weren't before, and now you are. Put your hand on it right there. Fire on those lungs in Jesus' name. Let it come, Holy Spirit. More, 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 more. Yeah, just let joy bubble up in her. Pierre, what's happened to you? Well, I hurt my back catching in uh, September 4th, and the, the pain was coming and back and forth. And uh, whenever I feel good, I just bend forward and the pain comes back, or I twist, I sit too long and it comes back. And now it's, I didn't feel the pain today, but as I bend over, it didn't come back. So I believe it's gone forever. You hurt your back catching. Oh my goodness. How many know that should never happen to you? We like to bless our catchers and make sure that they're absolutely right. Glory on him right here, Father, let it come. Yes, this lady is, uh met the Lord on September 13th and she's been healed of many things she said since that time fibromyalgia and she had a car accident how many years ago oh 20 years ago and what it and what a whiplash a real bad whip, and it never came it was always there the, the hurt and, and what happened tonight? my I, I felt oh, my heart beat so fast I'm sorry my English is not very good I'm so excited I just felt it uh, all inside of me. Everybody who prayed for me, thank you so much. Thank you. I asked for this. I asked. I'm so blessed. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jesus. Whoa. 
Father, may you use her in a mighty way. Whoa. Thank you, Lord. What's happened to you, Clara? Um, last conference, they prayed for my lower back, and, and the bones went back into place. But now, just a week ago, it started, like, it felt like there was a nerve pinched in my back. And, and also, my neck was just really sore and stiff, and it hurt to move it. And I kept getting migraine headaches. But now, like, the, it, I just got really, really hot. Like, I couldn't breathe back there. And then all of a sudden, it just really cooled off, and I can't feel anything in my back. I can bend over, and it doesn't hurt, and my neck is totally... Go ahead and check it out for us. No problem, huh? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just let glory come on her right here. Yeah, in Jesus' name. Oh, this is really cool. Uh, let, tell us. Tell us. Uh, I've been in four car accidents this last year, and so my neck was really, really bad. Like, the bones were all forward, and I felt them shift now, and the headaches are just totally gone. Like, I can move my head like this. I couldn't do that before. Do it again. <laughs> I tell you Thank what, you, Jesus. Wow. there's a whole bunch Woo. of people getting Shut. back healings and neck healings and everything. Faith is already coming up in the room again. If you need a miracle, stand to your feet. Let's give an, another wave Amen. of this presence of the Holy Spirit. Wow, in Jesus' wonderful name. Put your hands up to him and by faith, intentionally put them into those realms of glory into the presence of God. Holy Spirit, come mightily upon our hands right now. We believe that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And because of your great love, not only have you saved us from sin and eternal judgment, but you want to rescue us even now in this life from sickness and pain and disease. Thank you, Jesus. You are my healer now. I receive my healing now. Now just lay your hands on your own body and breathe it in. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine because of him. What happened to you? Well, um, my arm that had been bothering me is not hurting anymore. And then I was trying to prayer soak today, and I was laying. I had to keep getting up and moving because I had pain across my hip. That's gone. And then I was having some pain in my heel, and that is going right now. Oh! One more, Carol. Come on. Wow, this is neat. Tell, them, tell the people what you Okay, I have a, um, this bone on my toe at the side here. It always hurts a lot. And when I was here all night, it is hurting so badly, it's kind of feel like it's beating like that. And when we prayed, it's not hurting now. Wow. Isn't that great? He loves you. Yeah. Father, just come and fill her to overflowing. Wow. You're incredible. Mmm. Wow, 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 Holy Spirit. <laughs> Somebody just lay hands on Sandra there and give her another one. Come on, Ramesh and Elsie. Sandra, take it. <laughs> we just prayed again. I want you to check yourself. And if you feel like, wow, God has just done something for me, Wave excitedly. Will you do that? Oh, come on. Give the Lord a big shout. There's hands waving all over here. We love it, Lord. We love the realms of glory. We love heaven. We love the kingdom of God. I tell you what, people. There is no sickness in heaven. And when heaven comes to earth, your sickness, your pain, your problem must leave. So you tell it, you must leave, because heaven has come down in this place, in Jesus' name. Wow, all right. Well, I, I just wanted to uh, say a big thank you to our worship team, Jeremy and Connie here. Yeah, we had an awesome worship time tonight. Ruth, it was good to see you. Where are you? There you are. Ruth and I have been trying to hook up for a couple of months. So, well, when are you in Toronto? Oh, well, I just missed you, this and that. And so. Anyway, hi, Ruth, over there. 
And Connie and Jeremy got some great CDs here called The Song of the Bride and Passionate Bride, some of that which they did tonight. And Ruth also has some amazing CDs that uh, are some of my favorites, actually. I, I soak to especially your old ones. I mean, yeah, the new ones are good, too, but the old ones, uh, just so amazing. So there we are. Listen, I have some anointed announcements. Are you ready? What do you think, Carol? Oh, they're definitely anointed, Here honey. Here comes one. Housekeeping notes. No chewing gum. See, what? Yeah. If you had to get the gum off this carpet, you would understand why we want to do that. But see, this is holy ground, this carpet. And people lie under the power here. And imagine if you kind of rolled over and you opened your eyes. There's this big wad of gum that's been flattened into the rug. And you'd be going, eh. You know, so only water in the sanctuary, please. That'd be great. And um, it would help us if you could clean up some of your stuff in the sanctuary, maybe an empty water bottle or some tissue or papers or whatever. Just gather that up and help our team because we have a whole team of volunteers that after the meeting, they clean everything all up and that will make them real happy if there's not that much to do. Uh, parking. We have a wonderful overflow lot just down the street here on Marmac, right where our school of ministry building used to be. Nice big open lot. For, it's only about a three minute walk, I guess, from here. But please do not park in the Seventh day Adventist church, which is directly across the road, nor in our staff parking, so that the staff can function and get in and out just the same. We do have lots of parking, and so just um, make, make your way to our Marmac lot, and, um, and you'll be fine. Somebody said, hey, well, if you're having a parking problem, just come earlier. There you go. You know, you, the er earlier you come, there's always lots of spots. Isn't that true? So don't block anyone in, and don't double park, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, seating. We would ask that everyone please be sensitive to the seats that have pre-assigned we have some reserve section here. Um, looks like something over there. Where's our world changer partners? Where are you guys sitting? All right, wonderful. Look at all of you here tonight. Can you stand up? We just want to honor you guys. Oh, we These do. guys support us monthly, and uh, they come with us sometimes, and they send us all around the world on mission trips. God bless all of you guys. Thank you so Thank much. You I'm glad so you got much. your seats right there. Um, we do not. Uh, keep seats reserved overnight and so don't leave stuff on your chair thinking well I'm saving it for the morning because the cleaning crew will pick that up and uh, then you'll be looking for your passport or whatever it is you left on that that's a joke by the way don't do that either <laughs> meal plan everyone who has purchased a meal plan your meals are served in overflow rooms two and four at the very back just back there the other side of that partition is where the meals are served, so that would be great. Carol, why don't you do some of the announcements? Okay. Um, CDs and DVDs and MP3s of the conference sessions will be available in the bookstore right back there. And please place your order for the full set. MP3s and memory sticks are produced on order only. So please get your orders in right away so that they can get them done and have them ready for you when you leave. That's a good idea. Individual CDs and DVDs are available right after the session ends. So if you want just that session, you can purchase that in the bookstore as well. And we want to welcome our internet viewers. Welcome all you that are watching on Revive TV. It's great. We just bless you as well and let the healing power of Jesus flood right through that uh, TV right into your bodies and let healing come and um, testimonies if you would like to share a testimony with us please pick up a form in the lobby near the welcome desk and then drop it off in the box beside it and we will read them and uh, call you up uh, to share what God has done because we love testimonies aren't testimonies great 
you hear what's going on in the lives of others and it just it just ignites you and and you know just you want to just say oh god i want that too so just anybody that has a testimony please fill one out we love them amen okay can i have our ushers come please and uh, let's just prepare our hearts to give in the offering tonight every conference we do here we try to have it open in the evenings because we want the local toronto people to come in and and get in on the blessing and get blessed and uh, normally they have to work and so they're not registering and coming during the daytime but we want them especially to have an opportunity to give but it's always good to sow into the kingdom don't you think and uh, that part is easy I mean how many of you know God does not need your money how many know that some of you don't know that <laughs> God, do, God does not need your money. So what's the offering all about? Well, that's so that you and I get a, an opportunity to partner with him. So as we participate in the business of the kingdom, we also then share in the blessing of the kingdom. And as we give, he's promised to give back unto us. And he gives a generous portion, a good measure. So I'd like us all to pray and say, Father, what would you have me to do tonight? We're going to pray together in just a moment. But I want you just to realize something, that we've been holding revival meetings here for 15 and a half years. We're coming up on our 16th year. Jesus. We're still going. The lights are still on. The air conditioner it does work. <laughs> because of the faithful giving of God's people over all these years. We've taken up offerings and we've trusted God and tried to walk by faith. And in the midst of it all, through 9-11 uh, through crisis and SARS, SARS. crisis and uh, financial crisis and uh, H1N1 crisis and on and on and on, God has faithfully provided for this revival over all of these 15 and a half years. Can we give him a big thank you for that? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And Lord, we believe in revival. We believe in Christians coming and getting revived and touched and full of the fire and the presence of God. We thank you, Lord, for this place where people can come like a refuge, really, and they can get filled up again and go back home and be fruitful and multiply and see mighty things happen that will bring you honor and glory. And may your fame go to the ends of the earth, Lord God. You are a faithful, faithful God. We love you, we honor you, and we thank you for your great faithfulness. So, Lord, speak to our hearts tonight about what you would have us give. And then we will give gladly, happily, and generously as we sow into the kingdom. Whether we have much or whether we have little, Father, we sow joyfully because we so love your kingdom and all that you're doing. So bless your people as they give right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Now there are envelopes on the seat back there in front of you. And so you can take one of those and and fill it out. If you're writing a check, make it to TACF, and you won't need an envelope, really. If you're giving cash, then please take an envelope and fill in your details so that we can give you a, a tax credit for the North Americans, Canadians and Americans especially. And also, if you want to give by credit card, then you can fill your details out there. You need your credit card number and the expiry date and your name printed clearly and your signature and the amount. It would be nice if you filled the amount in, rather than our staff having to do that. I don't know, just a thought. So fill it out completely. And they thought, oh, I guess they meant $1,000. There's no amount filled in here. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, fill it out completely, and let's give joyfully unto the Lord. Can we give them a big shout of praise? Say, hey, we're glad to give. Shakaraba, Lord God. We give in the name of Jesus. All right. Ushers, please go ahead and pass the offering baskets there. Um, there's a couple of books that I have from uh, 
Roland and Heidi's ministry. Um, one is called The Hungry Always Get Fed, A Year of Miracles, Heidi and Roland Baker. This is just an awesome book. And um, some of the chapters in here are Glory from Village to Village, Fresh, fresh Bread, Christ of the Rubbish Dump, Christmas in Revival, Our Job is to Love, What Does Love Look Like, and The Long-Awaited Harvest, and all that kind of stuff. Who would like this book right here? I would have thought every hand would have gone up. You know, like, who would like this book? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Who would like this book? I want to see somebody really, really, really. Okay, that lady there in the pink. Yeah, come on. Come on. Can you give that to her, Carol? That's good. All right, now I have another one for somebody over on this side. Somebody's really, 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 really keen for this book. Okay, young lady, here you are. You're about as keen as they get. This is called Compelled by Love. Thank you. I am compelled by love. Uh-huh. And that's Heidi's book there, How to Change the World Through the Simple Power of Love in Action. I think you'll read it and you'll catch it. Fill her up, Jesus. Oh, let power come on her right here. Oh, my goodness. Are we going to do another song, Jeremy? I think it would be a good idea. Hey, we're not even late tonight. This is great, isn't it? I know. I like this starting at 7 stuff. This is good. Why don't we stand, shall we? If the offering's been by you, you can stand and uh, get ready. That's right. Thank you, Bob, for that reminder. We need, to, we, need to do, we need to do one more thing before we have the song, everybody. And that is, we have had this week an awesome, amazing, incredible mission school. Where is, it? Where is everybody from the mission school? Oh, look at you all. There are a big group of them here, big group of them there. Um, one of the things we always like to do is, let me have you all just run up here and pile up on the platform for a minute, and then we're going to have you go and stand under the flags, and we're going to pray for you. A prayer of impartation um, that the glory of God will come mightily upon you as you set your heart to go either on short-term missions or some variation of that. Some of you may well be called into a full-time work, much like Heidi and Roland do. So um, very often, in fact always, on the front end of our conferences here in Toronto, we will run a school or two. And sometimes it's a father heart school, or sometimes it's a counseling school, sometimes it's a soaking school or a prophetic school, or dreams and visions, or whatever. This one is a mission school. Wow, it's a mission school. Roxy, come and tell me if you had a good time this week. Oh, yeah, it's been amazing. Um, ha, lots of practical information. Oh, lots of power and authority speaking. Oh. Ha. What was amazing is that we just received so much, and we just know that, ha, his word will never come back void. Ha. Oh, and people also, people came to um, listen and to receive for missions, but there were also deliverances and freedom and father heart issues de dealt with and love issues dealt with. And people were getting blasted, and actually I've been pretty much drunk the whole day today. <laughs> so it's been really, really good. <laughs> really, really, really good. Roxy's a business lady who lives in Moscow half the time and Cyprus the other half. Isn't that amazing? And here she is, a missionary to Moscow. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> well, these are all the people. Can we stretch our hands toward them and say, Lord, just send them to the ends of the earth in the name of Jesus. Send them to the ends of the earth in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the power and the glory and the love of God come mightily upon each and every one of you now, right now. Amen. Give them a big hand. Okay. Now, can you guys make your way, just line up under the flags over here. And uh, while we're doing another song, we're going to have our ministry team just come 
and anoint you and bless you and say fire come on you in Jesus name and you'll never be the same again because of that anointing amen all right all right Jeremy over to you take it away
us. Lord, it is a happy day. Forever we are changed by your presence and your wonderful anointing. Why don't you just pray for the person next to you, your friend or your spouse, and just say, go on, take a good big drink of the Holy Spirit and his presence here. We want to be filled up with the glory of God this week. In Jesus' name. Oh, yeah. Oh, dear. Well, this is only the first night, everybody. Uh. <laughs> Heidi, I still can hardly believe you. This is amazing. You are just getting it. Somewhere about, uh, I don't know, 11 or 12 years ago, I believe it was 97, but I... I could be wrong, but we had a lady come, a little blonde lady, who was very much uh, a committed missionary who was just getting wrecked and killed out on the mission field um, with pressure after pressure and, yeah, attack after attack, I suppose. And as Heidi Baker came and we got to know her a little bit, we, we saw her open up her heart to receive the presence of the Holy Spirit in a, a remarkable new way. And she got stuck to the floor and couldn't walk and all kinds of stuff like that. But what happened in her heart of hearts was she got revolutionized and went home to Africa, her and her husband, and have, have led and now lead one of the greatest revivals that's going on in the world today in Southern Africa with hundreds of thousands of people converted and as far as I know about nine or 10,000 new churches planted and started, many of them in very difficult areas. They are, of course, everybody's favorite missionaries and certainly Carolyn, my favorite. Let's give a wonderful welcome back to Toronto, Heidi Baker here, who is just a world changer ah, of the highest order. <laughs> there you go. Oh, bless you guys. Oh, I love being here. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I love seeing all those missionaries getting wrecked. That's just great. That's just great. Shaka Baba. Like you're, you're nice because I'm always, I hide. Oh, I just uh, want us to lift our hands again. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for every leader in this house, God, that's just released the reins to you. Steve and Sandra and John and Carol and Jeremy and Connie, Lord, all the teams of laid down lovers, God, all the years they've just laid down for love, all the ministry teams, Lord, we're so grateful. Oh, let's just welcome, 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 manifest presence. That's what we need. Shakaraba Sunday. Let's just welcome him. Let's welcome him with our lives. I just, maybe you haven't done this in a while. Maybe we could just sing in the spirit for a little bit. Sing in the languages of the Holy Spirit. Idiot, 
Jesus a drink with your worship, worship in the spirit, commune with him right now. Just a little more, church. Press in for the presence. The enemy, the enemy comes in to steal, kill, and destroy. And we break his power in Jesus' name. We break the power of the curses. We break the power of the enemy in Jesus' name. We say no, no to every curse. No to every curse in Jesus' name. We worship the Lamb. We worship the Lamb. We worship Jesus. We worship you, Father. We worship you, Holy Spirit. Church, 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 let's worship just a little longer. just for another minute everyone if you could just close your eyes no spectating and just close your eyes and focus 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 your heart on Jesus focus your heart on the Holy Spirit and no matter whether you're in whatever season you're in let's just give Jesus a drink a drink tonight Let's just give him a drink right now of worship again. are joining us the angels are joining us just a little longer the angels the angels are joining us they've taken notice she could hear Yeah. 
Shift the atmosphere, God. Shift the atmosphere, God. Even more, even more, even more, even more. Open up the portal. Open up the portal of this house. Yeah. 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 If it's a sacrifice, if you don't even feel a thing, if you don't even feel a thing right now, offer up a sacrifice. A worthy lamb, you are worthy. Yeah, Ma, we want to give you more. We want to give you more. We want to give you more, Jesus. Let the angels descend and ascend. Let your people love you more. God, oh God, oh God, oh God. I pray, Lord Jesus, tonight that your people, your people, your bride would love you all the more. God, and I pray that everyone here that has issues and anger and stuff in them, God, that they would just release it to Jesus. Release it to Jesus. Release it to Jesus. Release it to Jesus. Shaka Torobo Sunday. And let the love of God penetrate your heart tonight. Let the love of God penetrate your heart. He wants to take us further and deeper. He's in love with us. Greater, greater, greater glory, God. God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Shaka Torobo Sunday. Um, the last thing, whoa, before I share a message, I want you to just lay hands if you love Jesus on someone. If you're full of demons, don't touch anyone in the name of Jesus. Whoa! But if you love him tonight, lay your hands on someone. Just, just pray the fullness, the fullness, fullness of Christ. And pray, 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 pray for tenacious love. Pray that they would finish well. Pray they would finish well. Pray that they would finish well. I believe tonight is about finishing well. It's about courage. It's about love. It's about grace. It's about life. It's about forgiveness. It's about wholeness. Shakatorobo Sunday. Oh, come on. Pray for them like you want to be prayed for tonight. Pray for them like you want to be prayed for tonight. God, oh God, oh God, oh God, take us, take us, take us, take us, take us, take us. Empower us, Lord, to run the race. Empower us, Lord. Fill us, fill us, fill us, fill us, fill us in this place. This place that's a well, oh God. Rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up. Heal the cancer, heal the cancer, heal the cancer. Shakatarobo Sunday. Heal, 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 heal the mental diseases. Heal the bipolar, Lord. Heal the arthritis, God. Heal, heal, heal. Remove the anger. Put in your presence, your joy, your love, your life. Shakatarobo Sunday. God, oh God, oh God. Oh God, just like I walked in this these doors 14 years ago, God, and you, and you restored, you restored, you restored life and strength and hope to me, God. Do it again, do it again for ministers all over the room, Lord. Do it again for, for laid down lovers. Do it again for every man, woman, and child in this room tonight. Do it again, Lord. Do it again. Don't stop coming, Holy Spirit. Don't stop coming, Holy Spirit. Don't stop coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. 
Oh, like the train, the robe that filled the temple in Isaiah 6. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. We say, here am I, send me, here am I, send me, here am I, send me. But we also say, like Moses, we will not go unless you go before us, God. So we pray for the God who goes before. We pray for our God who goes before us, who goes behind us, who surrounds us. God, we pray for the greater glory, the greater glory that the manifest sons and daughters would rise up on the earth. God, that there would be lightning, fire, storms, glory. God, the lightnings of heaven, the lightnings of heaven. Shift it, Lord, shift it, Lord, shift it, Lord, shift it, Lord. Shift it, Lord. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Let the lightnings of heaven show. Some of you are literally show, feeling like the lightnings of heaven touching you. Show. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Whoa. More, Lord. Whoa. More, Lord. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> oh. Hey. Shuka, Baba. Oh, we just need more, God. Shaba. We freely admit our need. That's what I'm doing, Lord. I'm not stalling. I'm not stalling. I'm just telling you again. I'm coming again, poor, poor. I know who I am. I know who I am, a little, little, little laid down lover in the dirt. But I, I love you, and you love me, and you're my daddy, and I'm your little your little girl laid down in the dirt, God. I'm your little girl, and you can do anything, anytime, anywhere. And right now, Lord, it's here. So God, oh God, pick me up like a paintbrush in your hand, Jesus, and fill me, fill me, fill me, fill me, and pour me out, oh God. Show! Possess me. Whoa! Possess me, Holy Spirit. Whoa! Wow! More, Lord. Go ahead, stay wrecked all night. Go ahead and stay wrecked all night. I, I mean, whatever. Shokorobo. Whoa! Noise doesn't bother me at all. I like it. Show. I like it. Our church is full of, well, the one where I am, well, full of children. They're never quiet. Shakaraba. I just love, Lord, I love that there's life, God. I love life, life, life. I pray more life. I pray for more life, God. God, oh God, oh God, I pray for more life, more life, more life, more life. Show. Whoa. Ha. Whoa. I have, um, whoa. Just keep receiving. I can, I can, I can talk over it. <laughs> Shaba. Oh, I'm so glad for this place. Oh, for Holy Spirit here. <laughs> for, oh, for John and Carol. And <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> Duncan, I'm glad for Duncan. I'm glad for Ian. I'm glad for my friends. I'm glad for you, Holy Spirit, my best friend. Whoa, I'm so glad you're here. Oh, Shaba. <sighs> oh, I can see it. Oh, good. Shaba. Whoa, Philippians 1. I'm going to start here. I thank God. <laughs> this is my prayer for this house, for you, everyone in this room. I thank God. It's a prayer Paul prayed. I'm praying it for you. I thank God every time I remember you. Whoa, in all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy. <laughs> Whoa. Here was a missionary. This Paul, this guy was a stellar missionary. Ha! Huh? And he prayed with joy. <laughs> we got trouble for being happy. But here it is right here in the book. This man who gave himself out, gave himself away for the king of glory. He prayed with joy. Shaba, I pray for more joy to break out in this house. I pray for more joy.
I pray for the Holy Ghost joy that there would be happy missionaries, happy missionaries, that the grouchy, grouchy ones would get happy. Whoa! They would get happy. Shaba. I pray for happy, joyful, kind, loving missionaries. Whoa! And ministers. Whoa, that they stop being miserable and they start getting happy again. Whoa. <laughs> I just pray that. Has Paul prayed, shut up off, for your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion. Whoa, there's a good work. There's a good work here. There's a good work here in this house. There's a good work inside of you who are laid down in love. Hey. Ha, hi. I see my friends all over. There's a good work. There's a good work. There's a good work. And I pray that that good work, that that good work that God began, that work of the Holy Spirit, that work of the Holy Ghost, that work where you said, go ahead, take me, use me, fill me, that good work. I pray, I pray, Shabbat, that it would be carried on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Ho! Oh. I pray that the power of the gospel would burn inside of you until the final hour, and then you would just burn right into the kingdom glory with them. <laughs> I pray that no one in this house ever be burned out. I pray you'd never be burned up. I pray that you'd never be burned out. I pray that you would stay full, show, I pray that you'd never feel like it's just another meeting, but every Shunday time you come expecting God to pour out more. Whoa! We have to have more. We have to have more. We have to have more. There's a dying world out there. Whoa! We have to have more. We need more for ourselves, and we need more for a dying world. Whoa! So, hey, 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 I freely admit I'm a glutton for God. Whoa! If God's doing anything, I want, I want it. Whatever he's doing, I'm like, oh, I'm desperate. Whoa! And I want to stay that way. I pray that you stay desperate. I pray you stay hungry. And I pray tonight that I would be like salt down your throat. Whoa. I'm praying that. Whoa. <laughs> that my stories and my little life, and I know it's a little life, but I pray that this little life would just like pour salt right down your throat. And you'd be so desperate for more that you couldn't stand it. <laughs> this is my prayer also that your love may abound more and more in the knowledge, knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best, and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, Shabbat, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Wow. Whoa. Do you want to finish well? Do you want to have courage to finish well? Shaba. I often, I often admit this. <sighs> mm. I've been preaching for 34 years. And whoa. I'm falling more in love with Jesus every day. Whoa! I'm falling more in love with Jesus every day. He is my passion, my life, my king, the glory, the glory, the glory, the glory of the Lord. It's so... 
wonderful. But you know what? Sometimes it's difficult. And I was praying about what to share. And Duncan really helped me. Because I was praying about to, what to share, and I was looking at Colossians and Philippians, and I was praying. In between meetings, I pray and soak. In between soaking, I soak. <laughs> this is what I do. This is my life. Even in Africa, too. It's like I hit the bush, and I, I lay down in the dirt on my cot or the dirt, wherever I have a grass mat, I'm happy. And I lay down, and I soak there, too. And it's just all about him. And so I was soaking in between the soaking. I came to soaking, then I went soak in my room. Then I went to soak some more. And I'm like praying and asking God. And I was thinking, I had this story on my heart. But I was thinking how I just shared it recently somewhere else. And Duncan said, don't be afraid to share some older stories. It's a new story, but it's, I mean, I've shared it before. But it never comes out the same. And then... And then I thought, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Duncan, because it set me free. I have a story about tenacious love. I have a story about finishing well and believing God, and it's a bizarre story. Do you want to hear it? Okay, good. <laughs> if you'd said no, I'd switch it around somehow. <laughs> But I'm a rascal, so maybe I wouldn't. But Shabba, look here, I'm going to keep going. Colossians, we always thank God, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Because we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus, the love you have for the saints, the faith and love that springs from hope that is stored up for you in heaven. Wow. And that you have already heard about the word of truth, the gospel that has come to you all over the world. The gospel is bearing fruit and growing. That's true, John. Whoa. All over the world, all over the world, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard of it and understood God's grace in all its truth. Whoa, I pray you be encouraged by that. I feel like telling you a story that has to do with tenacity and struggle and pain and joy. Are you ready for that? This is a story. This is just my little story. I have lots of stories. This is just one of them. I was flying with Roland. And Roland was, it was before he was sick. And we were flying from the north of our country down, well, we were flying from the south first down to the north. And I longed, I just longed to, to reach this tribe that had never heard the gospel. So I asked Roland, and I said, sweetie, take me low, take me low, take me really, really low. He said, how low do you want to go? I said, I want to go really low, as far as you can go, low as you can go without crashing the plane. So he takes me low, and you don't do this at home, but I open the door of the plane. I, I have a soaking spot in the back. I took the seat out. I just soaked there. And I soaked. So I open, push the door out, and I reach my hand down. I can feel the water spraying up from the river. We were low. <laughs> and I was, I was excited because I could see. I started looking and I could see village after village after village after village. I could see there these villages and then I started to weep because I could see that there were no roads. There were no landing strips. They were unreachable by truck or by plane. And I saw, oh God, oh God, oh God, these people don't know you. 
Lord, you have given us so much. You have filled us with your very presence. You have filled us with life and love, and we know what it is to live in the glory realms of heaven. We know that we're adopted. We know that we're no longer slaves and orphans. We know that you have taken us from complete slavery to sin, and you've set us free to live in the realms of heavenly glory. We know this. We know this. And I looked down and I saw village after village after village that had no clue. No clue. Not a single mention of the Savior's love. And I began to weep knowing what I know the glory of his love, the presence of God, the beauty of God, God touching human flesh, my sins forgiven, being removed from slavery and sin to righteousness, peace and joy. Oh, God. Wow. And I wept and I cried and I said, oh, God, help, 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 help. What do I do? And here I am sobbing my guts out. And the Lord answered me so easily, such an easy answer. He said, get a boat. <laughs> Sometimes God's just practical. I'm thinking, you want me to, okay, yes, Lord. I want to ask you right now, all of you in this room, has anybody ever heard God tell you to do something? Oh, about 10 of you. Awesome. <laughs> Anybody ever heard God tell you to do something? <laughs> okay, then. Do you do it? Okay. Do you always do it? Does it ever get difficult? Does what God tell you to do ever get hard? <laughs> well, I want you to finish well. And I want you to carry the glory of the gospel till your final day. You don't need any faith in heaven. Not a bit of faith. Heaven is easy. Shabba rabba. You're just holy, holy with the angels. It's easy. Maybe you rule planets. I don't know, but it's easy because you're there. But this life is a little bit different. This life, there are some struggles. This life, you need tenacity. In this life, you need tenacity. You need tenacity. You need tenacity. You need courage. You can't just wobble around in this life. This life, you've got to finish well. You're finishing the race. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. And it's a, Lord have mercy. If anybody knows that, it's you too. It's not a sprint. And it's a glorious race. It's a glorious race. But we need to know the rhythm of God's heart. So I'm hearing God calling us to these people that have never heard. And I say, okay, God, get a boat. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Some precious man in Canada helped us. And then donors helped us. And then more donors helped us. And then we finally bought a boat. It took about a year to research it. We got the boat. I was very excited. And I was very thrilled that we finally had a boat. And then I said, okay, hallelujah, bring the boat. And my, all our staff said, can't have the boat. No boat. I said, why not? Because you need an eight-ton truck to get the boat to Mozambique. I said, excuse me. God said, get the boat. So if we need an eight-ton truck to get the boat, get the eight-ton truck. So that took another six months or so, whatever. Five. Then they said, we don't have anybody to drive an eight-ton truck. I said, we'll just find somebody. We got it. finally got the boat, got the truck, got the thing, and we drive it. And then they called me back, and they said, sorry, 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 sorry. You can't have the boat. I said, what do you mean I can't have the boat? Of course I can have the boat. God said, get a boat. Bring me the boat. 
And they said, no, 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 you don't understand. They want something I don't know. Don't quote me. Here it is. Quote it away. Shaba, shaba. Anyway, something like 70% duty. I said, oh, sweet Jesus. I said, okay, guys, pay the duty. That took another few months. <laughs> we paid the duty, got the truck. Then it takes about five days to drive it to the north. This is all important to you. You're not sure yet, but it is. You're thinking, what is she talking about? What does it have to do with me and the glory? It does. Just wait. I'm getting there. Ha. Huh. <laughs> So the truck drives in, and on the road, the engine's cracked. Bummer. God ever spoken to you? Does it always happen today? The promises of God, whatever he said, just happens today. Boop, boop, ta-dun, 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 ta-dun. It's all here now. Boom, cloud of glory. We're all just sucked up in the cloud, and it's all over. Oh, Hallelujah. Sometimes the engines crack. Sometimes the road is difficult. But we don't lose heart. Because when God places something on our heart, we believe, we believe, we believe. And Paul prayed over the church. And I pray over you that you would believe that what God has done put in your heart will come to pass and if the engines crack get them fixed get them fixed I had to, do you know how much we need each other do you know that anybody here think you can win a nation on your own that's just bizarre Sometimes, I mean, I appreciate the kindness. Sometimes people introduce me, like here. It just, but it, it kind of, it's just embarrassing. Because I'm one little tiny person in a very huge picture. And I hear this, and I'm like, ah. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people involved all the time, you know. It's, sometimes it's, and, and she's planted 10,000 churches. Lord have mercy. I didn't plant 10,000 churches. A team in our movement did. I planted a few hundred. That's all. There's teams and teams and teams and teams. I mean, really. Sometimes people exaggerate. They also say things like things that aren't true, good things, bad things, whatever. But there's teams of people, even the bad stuff. It's not all my fault. Hey, there's team. Team, team, team. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Ah, I'm getting wrecked. I'm glad. I, ah, I contend for more wrecking God. Okay. I'm trying. I'm going to speed it up. So finally, long story short, it's two years, something like two years, seven months, ten days. Finally got the mechanic from Philippines. Got him over there. That's, I mean, do you know how much it takes to get the gospel out? You know, some of you think it's just some poster child. That's sad, 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 sad. Don't think that way. Don't ever think that way. It takes the whole body of Christ. When I got stuck here on the floor, that's what I learned. He said, you can do nothing without me. I knew that, I knew that. But he said, you can do nothing without the body of Christ. And I didn't even like you sometimes. But God had a point when he stuck me to the floor. Because you guys had to carry me around, take me to the loo. How humiliating is that? I had to appreciate you. Sometimes missionaries, you know, especially missionaries that work with the poor, don't always appreciate the Western church. It's like, oh, they're selfish. They're selfish. They eat too much. Oh, no, that's not, that's not a good way to look at it. Whoa, unless we have each other working together, we're toast. We're toast. Nobody can do anything by themselves. And nobody can do anything without the body of Christ. Just to get the boat in the water took about 100 people. 
So we finally get in the boat in the water, and we're so excited. We're going to dedicate it to Jesus. We're going to reach another unreached people group. Holy, holy, holy. We get our guys in the boat. We're so excited. We can hardly stand it. We get in there. We're all ready to reach the lost. And it's going. The storms are coming. The black people turn purple, the white people turn green, <laughs> barfing everywhere. We said, take us back. Take us back to the shore. Take us home. We want to go home. Forget the people on the island. Take us home. Blech. I'm telling you guys, ask anybody, anybody who lives in the real world, it's like, Sometimes there's barf. And, oh, we were so sick. We finally, we went back. And I said, Jesus, what should I do? I, fi I believed you. We got the boat. We got it, the truck. We got the driver. We got the money. We got it here. We put it in the water. We're sick. What do I do? He said, Dramamine. <laughs> Dramamine. Somebody had to create Dramamine. How many people did that take? That's the only reason we could reach those lost people. Somebody, I know, okay, if you were full of faith, you would not get seasick. God bless you. I thank God for Dramamine. I thank God for Dramamine. I, I, it took me about six weeks to get Dramamine. I had to order it from America, and somebody had to fly, had to come up with 2,000 bucks for a mission trip or something to bring me Dramamine. Holy, holy. I took it. All my friends took it. We got back in the boat. We're ready now. Huh. Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you, as we were throwing up over the side, one of the engines blew up. Oh, bummer. But anyway, we fixed it. Got the Dramamine, fixed the engine. There we are, ready to go again. They said, <clears throat> you can't go. You need a dinghy. I said, I have seen dinghies. I know dinghies exist. I know God said to go find those lost people groups. And I know dinghies exist in the world, so get me one. So they got the most pitiful excuse of a dinghy you have ever seen. That thing, it had holes in it all over the place. Now, how does this... I'm just trying to tell you a prophetic story. You all have been called to get in a boat... And you've been called to get to the other side. And you've been called to carry the glory. And you've been called to carry uh, the power of the gospel somewhere. But there are often holes in the dinghy. There are often obstacles on your way. And you could be discouraged if you don't fix your eyes on the prize. You could be dissuaded from finishing well because your dinghy's full of holes and you're sick. Whoa. But God does not want you to stop short of the goal, which is to bring every lost child home to the Father, which is for you to carry the glory which is for you to know who you are. Ha! Yes, it's still there. Good. That we may walk in God's love and then give it away. Yay! To Toronto and the world. Even London. I love that. It's still there. Oh! Oh, I'm so happy it's still there. Okay. <laughs> it just makes me happy. <sighs> so we, we finally got the dinghy, got a lot of duct tape. You should have duct tape. 
Seriously. What do you think your inner healing stuff is? You need some duct tape. You need some fixing. Some people think we don't need fixing. Then you're going to sink, sweetie. You need fixing. Oh, I need fixing. You need fixing. We all need fixing. Get the duct tape. Whoa. This is a prophetic word. Whoa. <laughs> God. He's asking God to fill you with knowledge. Fill you with knowledge. You need to know what God's thinking. You need to know what God's feeling. You need to know what he's doing. He's praying for you, Paul, and I'm praying for you. Wisdom, understanding, in order that you would live a life worthy of the Lord, that you would please him in every way, every way, every way, bearing the fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance. Hey. <laughs> and patience. <laughs> That's this is a good word. We need endurance. We need patience. We don't have enough of that. We need more of that. So I'm praying for endurance and patience and God allows us to experience things. This is so hilarious. I'm like, I didn't want that much patience. I want to get there. But I needed more patience. So God said, okay, just chill, honey, because it's going to take you a while. You don't think God talks like that, but he does to me. Shabbat. So I finally, finally get to the place we want to go and uh, got the duck, we pump up the soggy dinghy and we get to the shore and all these people are out there. The entire village has only 600 people. You could say, well, what, you do? what are you going to all that trouble? It's not even a crusade. What's your problemo? You should do big things. Well, sometimes God likes little things. And sometimes he likes you to find the little hidden peoples. Maybe he wants you to sit in Starbucks for two hours till some old lady comes up and you sit and talk to her and love on her till she meets Jesus or gets healed. Maybe just little things are important to God. So this little thing, this little village that had no school, no church, no gospel, no water, no fresh water, they had to go a couple hours in a boat, a log boat to get fresh water. I mean, I'm telling you, we got there, and I had a solar Bible. That's, cre that's the coolest evangelistic tool you ever saw. It is so cool. It, it, it's like the sun heats that thing, and the poor can hear the gospel. It took somebody else 20 years to translate four books of the Makua dialect. And some people would even say, oh, they aren't spirit-filled. Have mercy, Jesus. Ho, oh, have mercy, Jesus. We need the whole body of Christ. We need everybody. We need the ones that slide down the pulpit, and we need the ones that stand there firm and just do it for 20 years. We need the whole body of Christ. Everybody is God's child. Everybody is God's child. It's all. We need each other. We can't work alone. We can't even work with the people just in our tribe. As we love, I love coming home to my tribe. I'm home. I'm like, yeah, I can slide down. Nobody cares. I can go, whoa, I'm making it. No, it's great. But I still have to go to other tribes. Oh. So I went there. Every word I knew I shared. I'm sitting in the dirt with these people. 
and they just received, they just listened to the story of Jesus, the power of Jesus, the love of Jesus, the sacrifice of Jesus. And these people just said, oh, yes, yes, yes. I leave them the solar Bible. I was so excited. I led as many of them as I could talk to to Jesus, got back in the boat, started going across the bay, and boom, another engine blows up. Drats. It's like drats. Oh, God, help, 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 help. It took about six weeks to fix it. The Koreans paid for that engine. Two times the Koreans paid for engines. God bless them. Show. I just wanted to mention that. I just felt like telling you. Whoa. I think that's nice. <laughs> Patience. Joyful patience. Hmm. What? Endurance and patience and joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you. Wow. Did you hear that? God the Father qualified you. You, who many have said are a dingbat. God said, You're qualified. Well, we should be honest. We should be honest. This should bring hope to all of you. You are qualified. I <laughs> am qualified. I read it in the book. You're qualified. I'm qualified. Why? Blood of Christ Jesus, spirit of adoption. You're his child. He backs you up. Holy, holy. You're qualified said you're qualified. You share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. Inheritance of the saints. What does that mean? Love, joy, peace, peace, patience. Gospel, healing, life. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. If this is true for you, do you think that it's true for every man, woman, and child on the planet that says yes? Then what is it that we're to do? Where are we to go? Everywhere. Everywhere. If somebody in this room said yes, how many of you say yes? Shabbat, then we carry the gospel and the gospel goes forth to a dying world. But we don't carry a wimpy gospel because we are qualified. What a revelation. People used to go all wimpy, wimpy, wimpy because they didn't know they were sons and daughters. They didn't understand the Father's love. So they went to die, holy, holy. But they didn't understand the life part of it. We're not called to carry a wimpy gospel. We're called to walk as sons and daughters in the authority, the authority that Jesus walked in. God himself has qualified us. And so we yield ourselves to the power of the Holy Spirit and Shaba Rabba, knowing we are weak, he fills us with his strength, and we become strong in God. Wow, you're called to carry the glory. You're called to carry the glory, carry the glory. You're called to be filled with the glory of God and carry the glory out to the broken, dying world. Oh, he's rescued you from the dominion of darkness. And God, that's, see, that's what compels me. I feel like God said, oh, go and rescue those in darkness. Oh, I feel this compulsion in my spirit to find the lost, to find the broken, to find the dying, to find the sick. Oh, oh. But what does it mean when things are shaking all around you? Have you ever had shaking going on? I've had some shaking going on. For two years, Roland was extraordinarily ill. He was in Congo, and they chopped up people in our church. They chopped off their feet and their breasts. He, 
He was doing about 1,200 emails a day. You shouldn't do that. He was totally overworked. He was totally exhausted. And then people were cut up all around him. And he suddenly just went zzz. He just went zzz, flat line. He went to bed. He was unable to remember anything. He went to bed. He went he really got the rest thing down. He was in bed. He was resting. He never rested all those years. Been a missionary. Born on the field. Born on the field. Been to Toronto. Got blasted. Carried the joy. Carried the glory. And then stuff happens. And I watched him flatline just bzzz, and there suddenly there I am. Not only am I a leader, I'm now the senior leader and my husband cannot remember what country he's in. And there's still all those emails and I'm not about to be able to answer 10 of them. We need each other. Things shook so hard. I didn't know what to do. I, I knew to fall on my face. I fell on my face. I fasted. I cried. I begged. And at the same time, I'd be going out to the bush bush, and the deaf would hear, the blind would see, the cripple would walk. And I'd come home, and I'd have to change Roland's clothes, and I'd have to clip his fingernails, and I'd have to feed him because he didn't even know how to do those things. Sometimes we are in difficult situations, and we need endurance and patience and tenacious love. I watched as the sons and the daughters that we picked up from the garbage dump took care of their papa. I watched as the sons and daughters who had been orphans said, we'll take care of papa. They especially liked driving his red Land Rover. They loved taking care of Papa when they had the keys to his truck. They loved it. They said, I'll take care of Papa. Let me drive him. Roland never knew where he was going, but they'd drive him everywhere. They, were, they loved it. These kids took care of Papa, took care of his truck, or didn't. But anyway, they were just, they, took, they loved Papa. They fed him. It was awesome. Whenever I traveled, there were like 10 kids taking care of Papa. And then in May... Doctors came and they said, okay, he's going to die. That's it. Now, I mean, you guys know how, how I came up here, walked behind the pulpit when I was dying, and <laughs> fire hit me and I was healed. I love that. Whoa. So I'm told Roland's going to die. And I'm so tired of the whole thing that I'm like, well, heal him or take him. Because we've done everything we can do. And the doctor say, where are you? And he says, platypus reef. I don't know where that is. But it's somewhere in his imagination. And <laughs> this all ties in with the boat. Because we, I took Roland with me everywhere. As long as I had a bunch of my kids with me, we just took Roland. We were just like, come on, honey. Okay. And he'd be like, okay. He didn't know where he was going. And then we get to this island where we were, this inlet, and, and we get back, and we like put Roland in the sinking dinghy, and we st push him over there. And I'm just telling you the truth. I didn't want to leave him at home. I just took him with me. Why not? Might as well. He had no stress. No stress. No stress. None whatsoever. Took him there in the dinghy. He's like, he didn't know. <laughs> He, we'd be showing the Jesus film. He'd just lie down in the dirt. He was happy. He didn't know anywhere. He went, nothing. Boys took care of him. <laughs> didn't always give him a grass mat. They should have, but we, anyway. We, we got to this inlet, and there's Papa Roland. We put him in a tent, and I was all excited because they, they, these guys built me a mud hut, and I was really happy. And then we got a phone call from our captain. The boat's sinking. The boat's sinking. Bummer. The boat's sinking. I don't want the boat to sink. And here Roland is. He didn't even know the boat was sinking. 
And I, I said, oh God, the boat's sinking. It can't sink. We need it to carry the gospel. Stuff happens. Did anything ever happen to you? <laughs> stuff happens. Stuff happens. What are we going to do when stuff happens? You know what I did? What do you think? Uh, huh? What? Well, I preached. Yep, I did. The boat sinking. I kept preaching. <laughs> I had this lady, she's looking at me, she's freaking out because her husband's on the sinking boat. I said, honey, what do you expect me to do? Scream? I said, we texted people. The church is going to pray around the world. Whoever got the text, they'll pray. How many of you got that text when we were sinking? A few people. Yeah, I bet you prayed too, didn't you? The boat did not sink. The engines were toasted. Shaba. The electronics toasted. But we did not sink. Nobody died. Holy as a lamb. Endurance and patience. Endurance and patience. So here's what happened. The rescuers came so drunk and so angry because the captain was not very good at being a captain. He shot the flare sideways. This is not good. Sometimes the church shoots the flare sideways. It needs to go up. It needs to go up. The flare needs to go up. Not sideways. It needs to go up. And the captain needs to shoot the flare up because he's the only hope. And we've got to go to him. And we've got to go focus our eyes on Jesus. Not go sideways all the time. We can't get rescued that way. But he didn't know, and the guy was mad, and so he, we got Roland and a few other people back on the dinghy, and, and, and he, I mean, he, pour, he dropped his camera into the ocean. He actually remembered that. That was sad. There went his camera. Oh, bummer. But anyway, we just kept going. I kept preaching. I went to sleep in my mud hut, very happy, not about the toasted boat, but I was happy about the mud hut. I said, might as well rejoice. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to rejoice that these 600 people in this village now know you. I'm going to rejoice. And even though everything, every storm, every wind, every trial has come against me, I'm going to rejoice in you because you're good, you're good, you're good, you're good all the time, you're good. And I was so excited because I'm sitting around a fire and the people are cooking for us and they don't have any money, but they just took everything they could do and they helped us and blessed us. And I'm like so happy. And I said to God, no snakes, no snakes, because I'd been shipwrecked now. I have al already been beaten. I've been <laughs> knifed and beaten and slammed and hungry, and now I've been shipwrecked. I'm like, yes, now I've been shipwrecked, but I don't want snakes, because remember Paul I mean, you got it. Some of them didn't even know what I was talking about. Paul was sitting there shipwrecked, and it was, they cooked for him, and he was cold. We were sopping wet, very cold, very, very cold. And I didn't want snakes. And God blessed me with no snakes. But we went to bed. I was in my, my room of the hut, and my pastor's friends were in the other room, and the fire ants got them. So nobody slept. They're screaming, I said, oh, God, I'm tired. I'm tired. Now I'm tired. I'm shipwrecked. I'm tired. I don't like fire ants. I'm tired and tired, and I want to finish well, and I'm tired. And then the village comes 4.30 in the morning singing. Ah, anybody been on the field? They're singing. They're so happy. It's 4.30. Time to go to church. Oh, la, 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 la. Time to go to church. We're like, go dedicate the church. Help us, God. Lay hands on yourself. It said patience and endurance. Patience and endurance. What are you going to do with that? 
you're going to believe God for patience and endurance. <sighs> yes, Jesus. You are going to rescue us from the dominion of darkness. I have another story. If you've heard it, it's so good you could hear it ten times. You could hear it a hundred times. You could read it in a book. It's a good story. He's rescued us from the dominion of darkness. He has set us free from darkness. Do you know that the serpents are here to keep us from the wedding? That's their job. Do you know you've been given authority over them? Do you know that you can tread on the serpents? Do you know you can smash the serpents? My church Sunday morning, having a great service. Great service, marrying two couples. Two couples, really excited. One guy, I mean, this guy was a murdering bandit. I was happy to see him getting married. That's happy, that's cool, that's awesome. A murdering bandit is now, he never bought a t-shirt his entire life. He only stabbed people to get t-shirts. If they didn't give him the t-shirt, he killed them. This is a serious dude. He now leads worship in our church. Whoa! He's the worship leader. His name's Neto. I can't wait. Hi, Ruth. Good to see you. I can't wait for you guys to hear him play. He hits heaven with a makua sound. Wow! Anyway, he was getting married. The other guy was getting married. And two black mambas come right into my church. Can you believe it? This is not a vision. Hello, hello, this is not a vision. This is church Sunday morning, my church. Two snakes. And I watched Black Mamba's 20 minutes, you're dead. This is not fun. I, I watched about 300 people run out. Now, you're a little more, you know, you're used to renewal. Sometimes I go someplace and I go, whoa, and five people walk out. But you kind of stick around. But because you're all initiated. Whoa, we love Holy Spirit. Yay. So I watched, because I'm used to a few people walking out sometimes. And I watch about 300 people run out of my church. Just, I went, whoa. I must, I wasn't that bad. It wasn't too long. I know it wasn't that bad. What happened? They just, 300 people tore up. Then I see my son jump off the stage and whack the serpent's head whoa my son the worship leader i love to tell worship leaders this story because the worship leaders can see the snakes when they come in and then wham boom kill them and then the next guy who saw the snake was me i was carrying the word the worshiper and the one carrying the word they see when the snake comes in I went off the stage, I leapt off, and I got a, I had a bamboo stick. You don't have any bamboo sticks. But in this church, if it happened, you could use a, one of those speakers. My, no, that's a, I forget English so much. That thing, that mic stand, mic stand. And you could, and that's what I did. I took the stick, bam, hit snake's head right off. And then I looked at the brides. They were not happy. They were not happy brides. One of them's there. Snake in my wedding. She's so upset. She got veins bulging out her neck. She's purple. A snake, a snake. Oh! And the other brides just, it was terrible. I said, what do I do with these brides? This is their wedding day. Oh, beloved of God. We are called to marry the Lamb. We are called to marry the Lamb. We are called to be holy, holy, holy married to the bridegroom king. Oh, and the enemy wants to stop the wedding, but he's stupid. He has no head. So I stuck. Stupid. When you have no head, you're stupid. I stuck my stick into the snake, and I lifted. Ha, I said, so much maishki vencedores, we're more than conquerors. 
in Christ Jesus. We're more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. And I held that snake up, and it's wiggling on its stick. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. How ridiculous is that? Has no head, has no power, has no authority. The snake has lost its head, beloved of God. Whoa! Mm. Yes! Remember that! Mm. Oh, I'm almost done. It's not that bad for Toronto. It's only five, seven to ten. <laughs> <laughs> I won't I won't bore you. I hope. Whoa. I'm almost done. verse 19. God was pleased to have all the fullness dwell in him, Christ Jesus, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Jesus reconciles everything, the fullness of God in Christ Jesus. And what are we called to carry the fullness of God? I watched as the presence of God hit the church, as the snake with no head was lifted up, and hundreds of people came back in knowing they were safe. The church needs to be a place where people are fearless, where they're safe, where the serpent cannot bite them because the presence of God protects them, because the worshipers worship all of us worshiping the lamb and preaching the gospel filled with the power and the glory and the fullness of God but now he has reconciled you by Christ your physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish free from accusation if you continue in your faith no more accusation the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He comes to destroy you, to take you away from the presence, to take you away from your peace. And when things shake all around you, if you're not careful, if your eyes are not fixed on Jesus, then you can start listening to the bad guy. He's an accuser, and you must not listen to him. There is a mystery, verse 26, that has been kept hidden from the ages and generations, but it's now disclosed to the saints. Where are the saints? <laughs> Here we are. We're saints, we're sons, we're daughters. This mystery is disclosed to us. We are his. We proclaim him, admonishing the teaching, everyone with all wisdom, so that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. To this end I labor, struggling with all his energy, which so powerfully works in me. I struggle, I believe, struggling with whose energy? My own? No. No. I struggle with his energy. Do you know we struggled for Papa Raleigh? We prayed. We struggled. And then it looked like there was no hope, just like the sinking ship. It looked like there was no hope. No hope. Nothing left. I called Roland's best friend, Mel Tari leader of an Indonesian revival. He's raised three people from the dead. He stood with us through everything, thick and thin. He is a man of God and a true friend. And I call him because doctor said, call your friends, call your family, say goodbye. 30 people bought tickets to Mozambique. Say goodbye. All our family, friends, and Mel gets on the phone. He said, I'm not coming. I said, Mel. You're Roland's best friend. What are you talking about? He said, no way. I'm not about to come and say goodbye. 
You think I'm coming to say goodbye? No way. I'm not saying goodbye because he's not going anywhere. His time's not up. So I said, <sighs> you know, because I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there in the situation. I'm sitting there where every week deaf ears are opening. And food is multiplied. And I'm sitting there looking at this discongruity going, God, oh God, what am I to do? And Mel said, I know some people in Germany. They, they have um, vitamin therapy, 24-7 prayer, Holy Spirit healing. He said they, they have juice. Roland hates juice. But anyway, they have all this juice. They're, he said, I'm going to come get him, and I'll take him there. I said, never mind. I'll take him. I was so tired. I was so thrilled with revival, but so tired. And so worn out by the fight, like the boat, you know, oh, too, too, like by now it's three years and the boat's toast, you know, it's sitting dead in the water. I'm tired. I'm like, Roland's toast, the boat's toast, I'm tired. But it said patience and endurance. So we get Roland there. It took two people to get him there. And we're praying, we're contending. They stick him full of juice and vitamins and pray and anyway God did a miracle and in August he passed his flying test and God gave him back his mind <laughs> holy 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 God is a God of miracles and we will believe him and we will fix our eyes on him and we will worship him because he's good he's good in the winter he's good in the storm he's good in the trial he's good he's good God is always 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 good God's good God's good God's good he's our papa and he's good and I proclaim the goodness of God I proclaim the goodness of God in the midst of the storm I proclaim the goodness of God in the midst of the trial I proclaim the goodness of God in the midst of discongruity I proclaim the goodness of God I proclaim you are good Whoa, you are good, and your mercy endures forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Whoa, you are good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> here's, here's my final point. He's good. He's good. I got Roland a new camera. He did not remember the shipwreck, which is also good. And he's just, he's not doing admin anymore. So if you're trying to email him, he's not doing admin anymore. He's praying for, for people, and they're flying like little twigs. He's carrying so much joy, it'll make your head spin. You get near him, you're toast. Whoa. It's amazing. My purpose is that they may be encouraged. This is my purpose for you that you may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that you may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that you may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom all of the hidden treasures of wisdom and knowledge exist. Wow. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, and you have been given fullness.
in Christ, who is the head over every power and authority. Fullness. I'm going to ask you to stand, please, as I share the end of the boat saga. I'm asking you to stand because I feel like it's a prophetic word for you and you're going to respond to it as the Lord leads you. Um, the Lord is asking us to position ourselves, to position ourselves, that we position ourselves to catch the wind. Whoa, we've got to position ourselves. He's asking that we finish well. He's asking that we stay strong. He's asking that we carry the glory. And he's asking us to fix our eyes on Jesus. I want you right now to think about what God has asked you to do. I want you to think about the promises. If, if you wouldn't mind closing your eyes for a few minutes. Just think right now. Fix your mind on Christ Jesus. Fix your thoughts on Christ Jesus. What has he asked you to do? What has he told you would happen? What has he said to you? I want you to think about it. Holy Spirit, bring to remembrance your promises. Bring right now to remembrances the promises of God for everyone in this room. God, start speaking to them about the things that you have spoken to them about when they've been plastered on the floor. Talk to them, Lord, about the things that you've spoken about in the night hours. Speak to them, Holy Spirit. Yield yourself to God right now. Ask Holy Spirit to remind you of what he has said to you. Remind you of the promises that you are called to carry to full term. Remind you what has he said. He said that the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form and you have been given, whoa, fullness in Christ. He says, Christ says, he is the head over every power and authority. What has God asked of you? What has God asked of you? What has God asked of you? Since you've been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds right now, kurabashanda. Set your minds right now, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Glory, 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 glory. He says you have the fullness of Christ in you. You're not just going to experience the manifest glory in a meeting which is desperately needed day in and day out, but you will also experience the glory of God inside you. The glory of God, let it come, let it fall, let it fall, let it fall, let it fall. The glory of God, the fullness of Christ, that these precious beloved people, God, would finish well. The glory, the glory, the glory, the glory, the glory, the glory, the glory. The glory. The glory. I'm just asking Holy Spirit something. Just shakaraba. Press in, press in, press in, press in. Kuraba shandai. I feel like, um, yeah, 
I feel like as you hear this very last bit, I want to ask everybody who is a minister of the gospel. That's everybody. But I mean, if you're in full-time ministry, that doesn't mean the other things aren't important. They are. But I, I, I sense that there's going to be something imparted to full-time ministers in the, area of, in the area of courage. So I'm going to ask you to come to the front and full-time missionaries, full-time missionaries and full-time ministers. I'm going to ask the rest of the body to pray, to pray, to pray, to pray. If we can get the worship team, there's something that God wants to do right now in the area of courage. In the area of courage. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you and all over all of these virtues put on love which binds them together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body you are called to peace and be thankful, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach, admonish one another with all wisdom as you sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father through him. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Courage, 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 courage. I don't know. Whoa! Courage, 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 courage. Shakaraba, courage, 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 courage. Rise up, let the courage, 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 courage. Let the people of God be filled with courage, 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 courage. Oh, oh, whoa, oh, whoa. I had to get home. I had to get home from that island where I was stuck. I had to get home. I had to get home. And God just gave me courage with my friends. He said, courage, courage, courage. Oh, shaka, courage, 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 courage. Oh, I, I better not. I, 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 I think you, baby, oh, I don't know how to do this. Shakaraba Sunday. I'm just, yeah, yeah, yeah. But people will get in trouble. Better kneel. You better kneel. You better kneel. Courage, 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 courage. God, I pray for courage. I pray for courage. I pray for courage. Whoa, courage. Whoa, to finish well. Courage. I pray for courage. Can the whole body start praying for courage? You go ahead, go up. Yeah, shoo. Courage. I pray for courage and love. Courage and love. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, put courage on your ministers. Put courage on your ministers. Fire, fire, the fire, the courage. Whoa, the courage, the courage, the courage. Put courage on them, God. Courage on them, God. Put courage on them, God. Fill them with courage. Fill them with courage. Courage, 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 courage. Whoa, God wants to give you courage. Oh, God. Fire, 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 fire. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe all of us now would just lift up our hands. Shaka. And we say, yes. Yes. 
Yes to the promise. Yes to the promises. Every promise. Every promise. Yes to every promise. Whatever it takes, I will finish well. Whatever it takes, Lord, I will fix my eyes on Jesus. I will fix my eyes on the prize. I will not grow weary in well-doing. I will fix my eyes on the prize. I will give myself for you. I will walk in courage. Whoa. I will walk in courage. I will live in courage. I will walk, whoa, in courage, the courage of a son. Do you know, whoa, sons and daughters have courage because Papa backs them up. Whoa, he backs them up. Papa backs them up. Yay, even when it's hard, Papa backs you up, even when it's hard, because Papa loves you. Show, because he loves you. Show, because he loves you. Because he loves you. Because he loves you. Courage, courage, courage in the middle of the storm. Courage when the wind's blowing. Courage when your dinghy is full of water. Courage when the snakes come in the church. Courage to chop off their heads. Courage to take the sword of faith and wield it. Courage, courage. I sense that tonight. We're to wield that sword. We're to wield the sword. We're to wield the sword. God has called you son. God has called you daughter. Whoa, and he has given you authority over the serpents. And he has called you to carry the glory. And he's asking you to wield the sword, to wield the sword. He's asking you to wield the sword, to say yes, to wield the sword, to wield the sword. He's asking you to take the sword of faith and wield it and not stop short of your destiny. He wants you to finish well. He doesn't just want you to finish slow. He wants you to finish fiery, full of fire. So it's time, beloved of God. Shoo, shoo, take the sword of faith. Put on love, clothe yourself with the love of Christ. Whoa. The next day, the rescuers did not come for me. They did not come for Jose. They didn't come for Delio. And I was supposed to go preach at Oxford. And nobody came to rescue me. And I said, oh God, oh God, what am I to do? I got in the dinghy, whoa, filled up with water. Stopped a fisherman. He asked for a huge price. I let him go, chased him down. His engine exploded. It was bizarre, beyond bizarre, beyond bizarre, beyond bizarre. But I said, God, I'm going to finish what you asked me to do. I'm going to believe you. I'm going to take courage, God, courage to finish, to finish, to finish to do what you've asked me to do, to hold on, to hold on and to believe you, God, to hold on and love you, God. And I was in the middle of the ocean with my friends, Jose, my son Delio, Mario. I said, God, you're the God who rescues. You're the God of the rescue you're the god of love you're the god you're the god who comes to our rescue you're the god who allows us to finish well when all the storms are raging and i was in a storm and it's blowing and there were rocks and it was scary but god is good God is good. 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 Sometimes, beloved of God, there are storms. But in the midst of the storm, God is good. 
And we will not sink if we fix our eyes on Jesus. We will stay full, and he will bring us to the other side. Oh, beloved, press in right now. Press in, press in, press in. God is going to allow you to finish well. He's going to allow you courage, courage, courage to love, courage to love when people are mean, courage to love when you're tired, courage to love when you're weary, courage to keep on loving, to keep on giving, to keep on worshiping, to keep on proclaiming, courage, 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 courage in the winter, courage in the spring, courage in the summer, courage in the fall, courage, 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 courage. As that next boat's engine blew up I said God what 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 now what now and I blew a whistle some of you need to blow the whistle you need to blow the whistle you need to cry out for help you need to cry out for help because if you don't get help you are not gonna make it but you cry out for help and God will come and rescue you if you feel like you need to cry out for help, just cry out right now. Help. 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 You are the strong tower. Help. Help. I blow the whistle. Help. 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 important thing whoa I'm gonna say all night when we got rescued by the next boat whoa it was a little log and it was it couldn't fit us but they stopped because they had mercy and they rescued us and the four of us got in the log and the log was tipping over and we were all going to drown. And the, we, were, we were just praying to God. My pastor friend, Jose, can't swim. He had on a life jacket, but he, he had prayed. His wife is pregnant. She was nine months pregnant. He said, I don't want to die. I want to see my baby. I want to see my baby. Mm. You've got to bring every son and daughter home. To the father you can't die you can't stop you can't give up he said oh I need to see my baby and I needed to go whoa and love Oxford but we were sinking in the middle of the ocean and I didn't know what to do and it's already four boats later and I'm so hot and so exhausted I don't know what to do I said help help I just started crying help 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 God help God and then the six men that rescued us Muslim men rescued us they even had somebody swim to shore to get clothes for them they came and they rescued us Muslim men and I watched and they took this cord and they pulled on it and they screamed ho 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 and they put up 
up a sail. And as soon as the wind caught the sail, we were safe. It pulled the boat upright and we got to the other side. We got to the village of joy. That's what we need to do right now, beloved. We need to position ourselves to catch the wind. We need to position ourselves right now. Yeah, you might, you might want to lift up your hands. Just position yourself. And I'm going to pray, and you're going to pray, and we're going to pray, wind of God. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, blow on our sails. Holy Spirit, blow on our sails. Help, 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 Father, I thank you for such an incredible word tonight. We all feel strengthened in the inner man, Lord God. Because you have an eternal destiny for each and every one in this place. And you want us to lift up our eyes and look once again and see Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Now we're going to transition the meeting into uh, a time of prayer, and it's not just for the pastors and those in full-time ministry, but for each and every one of us. You're at your best when you're full of the Holy Spirit, and uh, if you can stay for another 20 minutes or half an hour or so, 
what we want to do is ask you to go to the prayer lines right now. I'm, I need some help with some of the men especially, but ladies too, help with catching uh, because we want to pray for you. Ministry team, wherever you are, can you just uh, hold your hand up high? And uh, if you're willing to help catch, can you um, head for one of these folks that have got their hands raised? I'm going to ask that we would stack the chairs up at the back and to clear the side there so that folks who want prayer, you can go to the back and uh, just line up in, in, in that prayer line. But I want you to let it, that be an altar where you can meet with God. And so just begin to open your heart and say, God, I, I really want to meet with you. I want my eyes and my heart centered back on Jesus again. I am seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness tonight. And I want to be filled a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit. And as the ministry uh, team come to you, they're going to agree with you in prayer that God, your God, is going to touch you in a mighty, powerful way that will be life-changing. We believe it together. So let's go ahead and transition. Ministry team, if you still need help with catching, just wave your hand like this. There's a whole bunch of them back over here. There's a few still over on the far side here under the flags. We love to pray double for all of our catchers that help us, and so this is a very important part of ministry. We want, we want the ministry time to be as safe and orderly as we can. We don't want anyone hurt by someone falling on you or something like that, so we insist on having catchers every time just for that reason. So go ahead, ministry team, and, and just begin. Heidi, of course, you carry on doing what you do. But God bless you folks. We'll be starting off again in the morning. Um, Heidi will be with us once again in the morning. And uh, it's just going to be a great morning. And so um, get a good night's sleep, won't you? Rest easy in the anointing. And then back again for more in the morning. But meanwhile, take a good big drink of the Holy Spirit tonight. Say, God, I want to be filled with all of the fullness of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.